Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. During the last few weeks I was busy exploring a new location in my life, that's why I was not able to complete testing of the Tintra X99MH and MH2 motherboards, and here I am with the Random Facts series video which I can produce relatively fast. I have collected quite a few interesting questions and in this video I'm going to answer a few of them, as well as just add some extra random stuff. Let's start with the BIOS update issue. Every now and then someone is texting me and asking or complaining about inability to update their BIOS using FPT or Alpha Win. After some debugging and investigation, I was able to figure out that the problem is that the people were trying to update or read their BIOS after waking up the computer from the sleep mode. The boot sequence is not the same between the normal computer startup and wake up from the sleep mode. The easy solution for this problem is just to reboot your computer. After that you will get access to the BIOS again. The next one is just my pure observation. I have tested and assembled quite a few computers using Tinsha X99 and Quanonji X99 motherboards. Naturally, I am trying to achieve the best performance for my customers, and that's why I'm looking for the best BIOS and the best run timings configuration. During this test I have figured out that Quanonji BIOS has better compatibility with the different memory modules. There is a modified Tinsha X99D8 BIOS which has memory timings configuration opened, but unfortunately this BIOS has worse memory compatibility. For example, I had 8 sticks from Crucial DDR4-2666 ECC registered memory. If I install 4 sticks into Tinsha X99D8 motherboard, it works perfectly fine, but if I install 8 sticks, it's not booting up. If I use Quanon G BIOS on the X99D8 motherboard, then the motherboard is working perfectly fine with all 8 crucial 8GB sticks. The same applies to the Huanangji boards. With Huanangji BIOS all 8 are working ok, with the Tinsha BIOS only 4 of them are working. Huanangji BIOS also lets me tidy memory timing slightly better, testing with SK Honix and crucial modules, 8 modules 8GB each, I was able to achieve CL13 with the Tinsha X99D8 BIOS and CL12 with Huanangji BIOS. In both of the cases the system was completely stable, but if I'm trying to take CL12 with the Tinsha BIOS, the system doesn't boot. An extra note. So far, Huanangji X99TF and Huanangji X99T8 are the only motherboards which can work with the DDR3-2133 memory speed. Even if I tried to use Huanangji BIOS on Tinsha X99D8 motherboard, which supports DDR3 memory, the memory speed is still limited to DDR3-1866. This seems to be a hardware limitation and it's not possible to solve it with a BIOS update. Additionally, if you use Huanangji BIOS on the Tinsha X99D8 motherboard DDR3 version, the boot time is extremely long. On DDR3 version I would not recommend to use Huanangji BIOS. On the DDR4 version it's a good idea to pick Huanangji X99TF or X99F8 BIOS for this motherboard. One more extremely important and quite annoying subject is DDR4 compatibility with the X99 platform. I have received very many questions about people who are buying DDR4 memory from AliExpress and that memory turns out to be incompatible with their X99 motherboard. First of all, it's important to understand that this compatibility issue is not a problem of the X99 motherboards. Xeon E5, V4 and V3 CPUs were designed before the high-density memory chips were available on the market Thus, they are not compatible with these high-density memory chip modules, which are currently used by the cheap Chinese manufacturers. In my test results, all memory sticks with 4 banks are not compatible with X99 platform. 8 bank memory modules, which I have on my hands, were all compatible with all of my X99 motherboards, but I have received multiple reports from my subscribers so that they were buying Chinese X99 motherboards and DDR4 memory, the memory is 8 banks variant, but it's not compatible with the X99 motherboard. That's why if you're using 8 bank memory modules, there is a 50-50 chance that it's gonna be compatible or incompatible with the X99 platform. So far I have not received a single complaint that the 16 banks modules were not compatible with the X99 platform. All in all, if you're planning to buy cheap Chinese X99 motherboard and DDR4 memory, I would strongly recommend you to buy entire set with a motherboard, CPU and memory combined all together. In this case, the seller will be responsible for the compatibility between all the components. If you're buying motherboard one way and the memory the other way, then there is no guarantee that the memory will be compatible with your motherboard and you cannot complain to AliExpress because you receive DDR4 memory and you receive an X99 motherboard. If they're not compatible with each other, that's your own problem. So far, all of the Chinese X99 and X79 motherboards do not have an option to control 3-pin fan speed rotation. 
There are multiple solutions for this problem, but my favorite one is to use a white splitter. For example, you can take such white splitter where the main header is going to the CPU fan connector on the motherboard, and then on the other side you will get a few extra connectors for the fans. One of them, which has 4 pin, will be the main connector, and there you will have to connect your CPU fan. For the extra two, which have only 3 pins inside, you can connect 3 pin fans. In this case, the motherboard will be fooled by the 4 pin fan connected to the main connector and the other two connectors will be adjusting their voltage according to the first fan speed rotation. Even though I have already made quite a few videos about Chinese X99 motherboards and the CPUs for this platform, people are constantly asking me what would you recommend me for a gaming computer on a very tight budget. The answer for this question is really simple. Pick up Xeon E5 2620V3, it has 6 cores 12 threads. Take Machinist X99Z motherboard, 4 sticks 4GB each for quad channel memory configuration. The CPU is limited to DDR4-1866 memory speed, that's why you can pick up the cheapest memory sticks. And buy the best graphics card you can afford for the rest of the money. The maximum graphics card for this combination I would recommend is AMD RX 5700, GTX 1080, GTX 1660 Super or 1660 Ti, or even RTX 2070. For the system drive you can pick Samsung QVO or Crucial P1, these SSDs have gone down in price significantly. From AliExpress you can pick an NVMe SSD drive, Kingspec or KingD. If you are ready to invest a bit more money and want to install a stronger graphics card such as RX 5700 XT or RTX 2070 Super or maybe even RTX 3070, 3060, then you can pick Xeon E5 2678V3, for the motherboard take Tintra X99 D8 or Huanan GX99 TF or Huanan GX99 F8. With this CPU you can also save a bit of money by going with the DDR3 memory. For the system drive I would still recommend exactly the same options, Samsung QVO, Crucial P1 or Kingspec King DN from AliExpress. Quite often people are asking me which X99 motherboard and Xeon I would recommend for the future proof. The answer is that I would recommend an AM4 motherboard and a Ryzen 3000 CPU. If you are looking for a future proof build, then you need to go with a modern technology. X99 LGA 2011 version 3 platform is rather old and there is no such thing as future proofing with this platform. If you are looking for a future upgradable computer, I would really recommend you to go with AM4. For example, if you are on a really tight budget, you can pick AMD Ryzen 3 3300X, Gigabyte B450M DS3H motherboard, 2 sticks 8GB each DDR4 3600 or at least 3200, and the best graphics card you can afford. For the system drive you can pick the same options, which I recommended before, Samsung QVO, Crucial P1, Kingspec, King DN. If you live in a really cold environment and you need a small portable heater, then you can pick the following. Xeon E5 1660V3, it has 8 core 16 threads with ability to overclock. Huanan GX99 TF or Huanan GX99 F8 motherboard, the same 4 sticks 4GB each GDR4 2400, in this case, the memory speed is important because you are able to achieve DDR4-2400 on this motherboard with this CPU. Overclock the CPU to 4.1-4.3 GHz, pick the best graphics card possible you can buy, the same SSD, Samsung QV or Crucial P1, Kingspec, King Dian, and enjoy. If it's getting too cold in your home, just turn on the computer, start to play some games, and it's gonna warm up. A few words about X99 in use. First of all, Xeon E5 V4 CPUs are getting cheaper and cheaper. Xeon E5 2680 V4 is the first CPU with a reasonable price tag. Right now you can buy it for around 150 euros. It makes sense to compare it with the Xeon E5 2678 V3, they both have 12 cores, 24 threads. The price is quite different though, nevertheless I plan to buy this CPU and make such comparison. Tinsha has recently released a few extra X99 motherboards – X99MH, X99MH2, X99MG2. These three motherboards are extremely similar, and as far as I know, all of them are using cheap B85 desktop chipset instead of the X99 or C612 chipset. All in all, I do not recommend these motherboards, but if the price is right, I mean if the price is really low, then it's a good option to pair with the cheap CPU such as E5 2620v3, 1620v3. Tinsha has also released two extra dual socket motherboards, X99 Dual F2 and X99 Dual Z8. X99 Dual F2 motherboard has only two memory channels per CPU, this can be decided by the memory slot locations on the motherboard. 
I have also contacted a few AliExpress sellers trying to figure out if this motherboard has true 8 memory channels or just 4 memory channels. All of them are trying to claim that the motherboard has true 8 memory channels, but in ADA64 you will see only 4 channels. Basically, they keep lying and saying that ADA64 is providing misleading information. X99 Dual Z8, though, is a continuation of X99 Dual first version. This motherboard has lost the onboard VGA adapter, instead it has got an extra M.2 slot. If I will have a chance, I will test this motherboard, at least to validate what is the speed of the M.2 slots. Is it PCI Express 3.0 or PCI Express 2.0? One extra Tinsha motherboard, which has pooped up just recently, is X99E8i. The motherboard looks extremely similar to Huanangio X99TF, I have already ordered this motherboard for a review, so stay tuned, it shall come as soon as the motherboard is on my hands. Huanangio has released just one extra motherboard, which is X9984. This is DDR4 version of X9983, and I see no reason or no sense in this motherboard. The motherboard has just 4 memory slots in comparison to X99F8, but the price is identical. Sometimes X9984 is priced even higher than X99F8. If you have been following my channel for a while, you probably know that I was not very fond of the Machinist X99Z motherboard. After a while, though, I have to change my opinion on the motherboard. I have assembled multiple computers using Machinist X99Z as well as Jin Giant 1G motherboards. So far, Machinist X99Z is the best motherboard out of all of them. Yes, the motherboard has its issues and caveats, but if you know these issues and if you do not try to overclock your CPU on this motherboard, and if you're not trying to tidy memory timings to ridiculously low values, the motherboard is delivering up to its promise. I still do not recommend to buy this motherboard for Xeon i5 2678v3, but for dirty cheap computers this is a very good option. I have also received multiple reports about Huanangji and Tinsha motherboards failing, but I have received very few complaints about Machinist X99Z. Most of the complaints I have received about X99Z were related to overclocking and memory timings configurations. One extra bonus for Machinist X99Z is a very good bias from BIOS I engineer GitHub user. In the previous video I have mistakenly reported that he is from Belarus, in reality he is from Germany. He has made a very good BIOS modification for Machinist X99Z as well as Huanangji X99TF X99F8. The Huanan G modification can also be used on the Tinsha X99 D8 motherboards, while the Machinist X99 Z modification can also be used on Alzanid X99 PE7 motherboard. To appreciate and encourage his work, me and Rafal from Huanan.pl website decided to donate BIOS ID Engineer a motherboard, in this case it's Tinsha X99 Dual. If everything goes right, he will be able to produce a BIOS modification for this board as well. If you are looking to support his work, or me, you can do that through PayPal. All required links will be provided in the video description. To finish this video, I would like to provide some information about what to expect in my channel. Of course, I am finishing up X99MH and X99MH2 reviews, so this should come pretty soon. The next one I plan to have Xeon E5 2680v4 review, and a benchmark comparison between E5 2678v3 against Ryzen 3 3300X. The problem is that Ryzen 3 3300X is out of stock everywhere, I might not be able to get this CPU on hands, but if I get it, I plan to do such comparison. I am also expecting engineering samples of Core i5-10500 and Core i9-10900, so reviews and benchmarks of these CPUs are also expected pretty soon. Not quite sure how soon though, the post is not very reliable lately. Additionally, I have ordered two interesting X99 motherboards from Taobao. These motherboards are not available on AliExpress, that's why I had to go through Taobao. I was expecting these motherboards to arrive somewhere last week, but they are still somewhere in transit. For the 10k subscribers milestone, I plan to do a small live stream, maybe with some live stream testing and a small Q&A session. For now though, that's all I have for you. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, goodbye.